All right, everybody, welcome back here to News Now from Fox. Take a look at this video here because, well, it went viral. It has millions of views already on the web and social media. Yeah, take a look at this. This is something to see, a jet suit. This could be really the future, not only for military, but what about just regular people that want to get up into the sky and see what it's like to be flying so we have a great interview set up right here we are going live right now we are worldwide as always we are going to be talking to richard browning right now he joins us here he's the founder of gravity industries thank you so much for joining us here and this video first off it has captured the attention just of so many people i mean it, this is amazing to see thank you yeah it makes a change from News, that is awesome that is awesome so tell us tell us first off how did this all get incorporated how did you develop this i mean this must have took years so the journey started around 2016 when i first uh started developing these ideas it was actually alongside a day job um i was actually an oil trader by background for 16 years but i did spend quite a bit of time in the military in the british royal marines reserve here but yes, started in 2016 and got it to work late that year. And then we launched the company Gravity in 2017. Since then, we've been on a bit of a world tour. We've covered 33 countries and 115 events before COVID made that a bit more difficult. And in parallel, yes, developed a whole load of applications, including uh, going back to my old Royal Marines days and finding that it's quite a neat way of moving uh, special forces or indeed you know, Royal Marines around uh, the, the environment. And we're taking a look again at the video here. Uh, now, what did the Royal Marines, what, what, what did they say about it? And what, it, what, what was the biggest thing that they got out of it? So I should say, I mean, the exercise you're seeing there is probably really the culmination of multiple exercises we've done with the Royal Marines and also other allied nations around the world. Um, and yeah, it, it does show that we've got quite some potential when it comes to how to board vessels. Um, certainly more interesting than, than the conventional methods using boats and poles and hooks and, and even fast roping helicopters. But yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I'm not gonna speak for the Royal Marines, but um, yeah, I think they were pretty impressed. And yeah, this has got um, yeah, a huge amount of potential going forward. And talk about that potential going forward because Will this be possible for a, a regular Joe just to want to do this on a weekend if they want to like rent it out? Is this something possible in the future? So, yeah, we actually we've trained over 250 members of the public in the UK and uh, and just outside of L.A. at Camarillo Airport. We used to uh, do training there again before COVID and we will be back there. Um, surprisingly enough, this only usually takes most people about a day. Uh, to pick up. Um, you do it with a sort of safety tether behind you, like a sort of climbing top rope. And it's a bit like surfing or snowboarding, one of those kind of activities where you have to feel it and feel the balance. And then your, you know, brilliant balancing machine that is your brain just picks it up. And yeah, and a lot of people are flying free of the tether within a couple of days. And does this offer, I mean, when, when someone wants to do this, is there any restrictions? I mean, do they have to go like here in the, in, in the U.S., we have all these even drone restrictions. What about if someone had this, uh, what, I mean, what, what, what leads up to that? So over this last four years, we've worked very closely with the CAA in the U.K. and the military version of the CAA as well, and indeed your FAA as well. Um, because we haven't gone running around selling these kind of crazily all over, to, you know, all over the place, and because we have had a very safe track record over that four years of delivering all these events without incident, the, those regulatory authorities have actually, and again, I'm not going to speak on their behalf, but they've been very generous in saying, look, carry on being safe and sensible. And actually, we, ha we don't have the rules you have in place for drones. We aren't classified formally as an aircraft, nor a drone. And so because we've had that very sensible attitude, we, we, we're allowed to carry on doing what we're doing. But I mean, it would change if everybody started flying around with these things. And that's not really what we intend. It's a bit like going to the shops in a NASCAR or an IndyCar. You know, you could do, but it's not probably a sensible idea. At the moment, it's a niche activity, uh, but an amazingly thrilling one as well. And that's why we were launching the race series in Bermuda just before COVID uh, made that kind of go on ice at the moment. 
And for people that are watching this, I mean, this just seems like such a dream. Can you just uh, tell us what that feeling is like to be just levitating and flying? Yeah, I'll try. <laughs> it's, it is an amazing experience. It is a little bit like that dream that we have sometimes have of flying where you are just free to go wherever your mind takes you. And for people who think, you know, oh, I must be ripping your arms off really hard. It's really not. There's two engines on each arm, which can combined feel like you're just leaning on that thrust. There's another engine on the back. Most people don't spot, which is lifting a lot of the weight. It's just the same as le leaning on like a kitchen worktop. And so you're left free to just think wherever you want to go. And just like on a bicycle, you don't spend all the time worrying about balancing or steering. You just think I'll cycle over there. It's as free and as liberating as that. It is truly a really awesome experience. And then lastly, Richard, uh, tell me about the passion that you have uh, for flying. I saw that you did a TED talk uh, a couple of years ago. I mean, what is this uh, total obsession about flying and just getting up there? Well, I, I so, my background, uh, as I say, doesn't really it doesn't really help with that. Uh, but I, as I say, I was an oil trader. But before then, my whole family background was from the world of aviation and engineering. My late father was a was a maverick engineer and inventor and aeronautical engineer. Um, his father was a pilot and, and wartime pilot. And my other grandfather used to run a big uh, UK helicopter manufacturer, actually, back in the day, a long time ago. And I was too small to remember most of that. So it was definitely in the blood. But I would say my military time really taught me that you can achieve a lot with your brain and your body. You know, it's amazing when you take a step back and think about how phenomenal it is that a human can like, you know, run across an uneven surface using our brains as, you know, as a balancing machine. So I had this, you know, belief that you could reimagine flights, not by sitting inside a flight vehicle or strapped to one. What if you just added the minute missing element, which is just a bit of propulsion, a little bit of horsepower? Um, you know, wouldn't it be an amazing feeling to fly in that almost sort of Leonardo da Vinci dreamlike kind of way? Sounds crazy still, but you know what? Some of the best ideas in the world started as a crazy dream and look where we've taken it. Yeah, that's such the case there, because I, I, I would want to guess, though, when you're when you're doing that and you're, you're flying like that, it's it's doing more than just the oh, my God, this is amazing. I think it's doing something more for your mental capacity as well. Like if I could do this, I could do a lot more things just in my regular day of life, my work, uh, relationships. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean, I, every client we've ever had, to, you know, in Camarillo or in the UK here that, that's got clipped into that tether started those engines up and gone for a moment going, oh my God, what am I doing? Seconds after that, you realize this is peaceful, calm, tranquil, dreamlike state of just being completely free. And yeah, I think everybody that does this is pretty changed. It is a, unintentionally, it is a pretty deep experience to feel that kind of freedom. All right, Richard Browning, thank you so much for joining us here today. This is uh, truly amazing in that uh, video, capturing a lot of attention. Thanks so much for talking to us about it. Thank you.